Toho Fan Game Jam 8 is here, and this time, the theme was dreams. For usual, I worked on a game with a team, and this one was called Toho Lucid Witch. But, there's a ton of other games too. I'm not going to cover every single game, but I will still go over quite a bit of them. This video is divided into two sections. A quickfire round where I talk about a lot of the games briefly, and a slower section where I go more in depth into my favorite games from the jam. So, let's take a look. One Two Three Dreaming is a mini puzzle game where you have to plot out the dreams of an idiot. Really short, but also really cute. Shinny's Mad Mad Dash is a button masher where you have to try to destroy a city as Shinyamaru. Don't like you grow bigger? Well, now you can be it. Toe Home Run Derby has a great title, and it's also pretty fun. Take part in three mini mini games to try to hit a baseball as far as possible. Forgotten Umbrella's Night Train is a challenging retro-style platformer where you play as Kogusa. The game takes advantage of her umbrella to create some unique mechanics, and the story is also pretty interesting. Duhaniwa Dream of Ceramic Sheep is a puzzle game in a similar vein to Mario vs. Donkey Kong. The sheep are adorable, and the game gets surprisingly challenging. Renko has too much fun drawing on Mary Bell's face plays like Gamer from WarioWare. Try to draw on Mary Bell's face as she dreams, but don't get caught. Toho Dreamwalker is a 2D platformer where you switch in between the dream world and the real world to jump on designated blocks. The dream world effect in this game looks insanely cool. Night Sparrow Into Dreams is based on Nights Into Dreams. Fly around a trippy world as you uncover its mysteries. Nostalgic Blues is a twin-stick shooter where you play as Alice and destroy Bake Bake. This game looks really cool, plays really cool, and the music is really good. Nightmare of Weakest Creature is a Yume Nikki style game that serves Eika. Like how Mistia Izakaya highlights the strength of Mistia's character, this game highlights the strength of Eika's character. Give it a shot if you want a great Toho story. Sakiya's Endless Nightmare is an arcade style game that's stylized like an action movie. It's pretty immersive and does a good job making the player feel both powerful and tense at the same time. Kuishi's Berry Goo Adventure uses Nume Neko's art style with their permission. The game looks really nice, although it is pretty short. Riverside Drifting is a game about guiding Komachi's boat through rocks as she naps. It makes use of some nice rope mechanics and is pretty relaxing. Dormy's Sweet Dream Bubble is a puzzle game about generating as much chaos in other people's dreams as possible. Try to figure out ways to add more and more chaos to each person's dream. Dreams of Arcadia, Dream of the Perfect Deck, is a roguelike deck builder where you move on a grid and deal with enemies. The card mechanics allow for a lot of different types of strategies. It's a good thinking game. A Guardian's Dream features Dream Mei Ling and Dream Sakia guarding a gate to a party for the Scarlet Mansion. Mei Ling lets devils in, and Sakia keeps fairies out. A time limit and the shifting positions of Mei Ling and Sakia make this game really engaging. Alright, quickfire's done. Now let's dive deeper into some more games. Dream Manager Nightmore Ordeal has you playing as Dormy in a management game. Well, almost a management game. You do move around resources to try to give people good dreams. But if a nightmare emerges, a Danmaku battle ensues. This, this is pretty genius. A Danmaku scene game with a completely separate phase is a fantastic concept, and it's executed really well too. Dream Manager's concept is what stood out to me, and it's an easy recommend. Gensokyo Night Chase Overdrive pays tributes to the 80s and 90s with a super rad aesthetic. Within the world of Toho, it also makes total sense. Dorimi says that the Cyber Dream Dystopia is based off of the Lunar Capital, and the Dream World itself already has grid lines as you travel through. Characters and objects are also based off of 80s movies. There's a lot of dialogue contemplating things like free will. Man, I love this world. The world of Gensokyo Night Chase is extremely impressive, especially for only four days of work. And of course, it's a game! I don't actually know if you can die in the simple lane setup, but it's still pretty fun to navigate the landscape. It kind of feels like an old Flash game, 
And I mean that as a good thing. If you ever want to enter a new Gensokyo, dive into Gensokyo Night Chase. In Strangers of Gensokyo, Odin Dream Edition, Sumireko finds herself in Gensokyo. Or maybe she finds her soul in Gensokyo. Because the game is very... Souls-like. <laughs> Look, I spent four hours doing homework before I wrote this script. I needed a bad joke in here somewhere. Anyways, I've never actually played a Souls game. But the experience here was pretty fun. Different weapons catered to different playstyles. I used a mix of the spear and gun, while some other people I know only used punches. The bosses are all fun with fair attack patterns, you have a dodge roll. Oh, and the sound design. Brilliant. Go play this game. Along with Gensokyo Night Chase, another great game world is the world of Chill Island. This game is inspired by Link's Awakening, which is really fitting if you know about- SPOILER! There's no combat. Instead, the focus is on exploration. Explore an island to find tools, make drinks, and get to know the islanders. The game's pretty short, with it essentially being a proof of concept. But it's a very... chill... time. If you want to relax, check this game out. Good old Ice Lemon. A friend of mine, their games always seem to take a mechanic and go wild. Fishy Dreams is no exception. The concept? Everyone but Kaguro has turned into a FISH! Kaguro explores her dreams to try to find Wakashime at the end. What you get is a short bullet hell with an aquatic control scheme, addicting gameplay, and great aesthetics. Yu Yu Crab, Sakiya Fish, and more. It's a game quite unlike anything I've ever played, and I had a big smile on my face the entire runtime. This is a must-play. <laughs> Toho Fishception is another fish game, but it plays completely differently. Instead of everyone else being a fish, you are a fish. You're the giant catfish from Toho 12.3, and you spend your time diving into dreams to try to find Mei Ling for a rematch. As you go through dreams, you get to see various Toho characters in a super charming art style, and they always have some witty banter to say. You get items from some characters, you give them to others, you play a minigame here and there. A story-based game with a few minigames? It caters to my taste heavily. This is another must-play. Cerno's perfect punch-out is... You know what? I'm just gonna let this game speak for itself. <laughs> yeah. Must play. Toho Dream Runner is a rhythm runner game. Now, I've coded a rhythm game for Toho Game Jam before, and let me tell you, it's not easy. But this game, oh my god, it actually works. And it works really well. Hits are timed to the beat really nicely, the music sounds really good, there's multiple stages. Wow. The amount of sheer effort and skill needed to make a game like this in four days should not be understated. But even discarding the effort, the final product itself is so good. Definitely a must play. And finally, we have Toho Phantom Assembler. This is by Rock, who helped make my favorite game from Pride Jam 2. And now, they've made my favorite game from Toho Fan Game Jam 8. 
a roguelike third-person shooter with a horror atmosphere. You can serve resources, get stronger, explore the depths of the nightmare more and more and more. Everything comes together to create an unnerving and chilling experience. The subtle use of sounds, the depowerment of the player, the uncanny vibe of the enemies, and the mystery you dig up as you go deeper and deeper with each loop. This game was a grand experience, and I'm so happy I got to play it. A must play for sure. And those were some of the games from Toe Fan Game Jam 8. There are plenty of games I didn't cover, so if you want to see those games and the games I did talk about, you can find a link to the jam in the description below. Oh, also try my game, please. I'll also leave a link for the Toe Game Dev Hub's Discord, a fun place to hang out whether you want to make games or not. There's a lot of great stuff in this jam, and I can't wait to see what people make for the next one.